to be the exceptional Puerto Rican. I'm light-skinned. I began to realize that those young people had realized something the super smart Puerto Rican never realized and was never critical enough to understand that in their own ways they told me something very powerful. The theme that ran through that study is teachers hear me, they don't listen. That was my awakening. It was my awakening because I realized my ex-English teacher, a wonderful white woman who was my honors English teacher, also happened to be a racist in her own ways. Not probably not her <laughs> fault, but a system that had created. Because I want to be very clear, not all people that are racist really are racist because they, they don't even realize it. You've been raised in a society in which you have totally denied a culture of empire. Everything we do, everything we do in this country is with the idea that we do it for the good of other people. That's what drove the spirit of manifest destiny. And that's what drives this idea of American exceptionalism which a whole bunch of people have brought into this American dream. And so, I had to realize that. And so, that a few weeks after, I began to meet with a group of students who wanted a Puerto Rican history class. So I began to teach this Puerto Rican history class after school. And my brother and I began to talk. And we began to talk about, with several other people in the community, this is a travesty what's happening. It's a crisis. We need to do something about it. And so, in 1972, we created the only Puerto Rican center high school that ex still exists in the United States. The Dr. Pedro Alviso Campos Puerto Rican <coughs> High School. And just two years ago, we celebrated the 40th anniversary of the founding of that school. But I, I want to thank you. This, this is a school for dropouts. We began with 12 students. Today, we have a school that has 100. 85 students, we've created a whole system, an alternative school system in Chicago. And within one charter that we created, called the Youth Connection Charter School, there are 23 small schools, independent schools, that are African American and Latino schools in Chicago, with 4,000 students, wow. right? Now, now I want you to, to listen to what I'm going to say because it's going to be, I want to frame my brother's life around this, what he did, and the legacy that continues to inspire us and to carry our work. So, we created this um, high school. Yesterday, we celebrated the 40th anniversary. I was in, in Chicago, it's a huge celebration. The 40th anniversary of the founding of the Alternative School Network, which my brother and I and a group of other people got together all kinds of people who were creating alternative educational practice. Today there are 43 schools that are part of this Alternative School Network. We celebrated our 40th year uh, yesterday. And the day we founded, our, conven our, our convening meeting was attended by Paulo Freire. This was our greatest glory. If you know anything about education, you know that Paulo Freire is the icon of Latin America and of an education that is premised on liberation. 
So, my brother was one of the people that brought out of Freire to Chicago. And <coughs> three months ago, two months ago, we celebrated the 40th anniversary of the construction of Roberto Clemente High School, a huge high school designed by one of the greatest architects in Chicago, named after the great baseball player Roberto Clemente, yeah. built in 1974 that replaced my high school, which was an overcrowded school that was built for 1,500 students and had 3,000 students. And we fought, and my brother organized, and after almost seven years, we were able to create and erect and build this new high school. 40 years ago. In July, we celebrated the 40th anniversary of the creation of a drug rehab center for drug addicts and treatment El Rincón. 40 years after, it is still in existence. Two years ago, we also celebrated the 40th anniversary of a publication that has been published by Puerto Rican students. The only Puerto Rican student publication that continues to be published anywhere in the United States on a monthly basis at <laughs> Northeastern Law University, where I have taught for many years, for 40 years, this uh, magazine journal has been published by students called entitled Que Onde Sola, may it fly alone. And to this day, that publication continues to be published. And one of the people that work both at the high school as well as in the construction of this magazine is our own Congressman Luis Gutierrez, who also happened to have been my student. And today yeah. is leading the fight for immigration in this country, a Puerto Rican leading a struggle for immigration. 